Hi, how you doing? This is Rich. Here we have a Rich TV Live with a very special guest, the CEO of Victory Square Technologies, Shafin Tejani. How are you doing today, Shafin? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Why don't we start off by you telling us a little bit about your company, Victory Square Technologies. Uh, so at Victory Square, we're building uh, the tech giants uh, of the future. Um, we've selected and curated about 20 portfolio companies from all over the world. Um, these are companies that are using AI, uh, AR, VR, uh, blockchain to disrupt the health, gaming, fintech, and insurance spaces. Um, so what we do is we identify those companies and we uh, bring in some super talented people to help uh, you know, incubate, grow, scale, and commercialize uh, those companies. That's fantastic. A number of your select portfolio companies have achieved significant milestones when looking at revenue growth, product development, and customer acquisition. Can you tell us about three of these companies? Yeah, so we have, we've got a, a number of companies doing some exciting things, but if I had to, you know, to, to talk about only three, um, I would say V2 Games, um, Fans Unite, and uh, Immersive Tech. Um, and there's three consistent themes to, 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 to those companies. One is they're uh, addressing a pain point in a large market. Um, two, each of those companies are first mover and thought leaders in those, those spaces. Um, you know, and the third is that they've got a very strong team and a product, uh, you know, kind of in there. In the case of V2 Games, uh, they're disrupting the gaming and esports space. Um, it's a royalty play. Uh, it's led by um, a founder named Sam Chandola. He's a top 30 under 30 winner, super sharp. Uh, this company originally came out of India. Uh, They've been building and working on projects like Pac-Man, uh, Men in Black, Hello oh, Kitty, wow. uh, Pacific Rim Breach, Breach Wars. Um, and I think Snapchat just actually invested or co-invested in one of the projects that had been incubated in, in V2. And in the, you know, they say the gaming space is bigger than, than um, movies and music combined. So, wow. you know, we're super excited about that. It's also, we also have a controlling interest in, in V2 and it'll be I think being spun off in the next four to six months. Um, wow. The second would be Fans Unite, um, you know, the sports betting space. They're a disruptor in that space. Uh, really, really sharp team, but the space is massive. Right now, we're targeting the U.S. market. Uh, in the U.S. market, the you know numbers have flown around. The, it's about a hundred and fifty billion dollar market that's that's illegal right now. That's going to be. Wow. Uh, legalized in the next three to five years, and um, Fans Unite's kind of positioned themselves well uh, into that space. Uh, they'll also be going uh, public and being spun out of VST Great. in the next four to six months to unlock value. And then the, the third is a company called Immersive Tech, again, led by two top 30 under 30 winners, Jeff Jang and Adrian Duke. Uh, they're targeting the employee training space, which in North America, you know, I think is a you know 40 to 60 billion dollar uh, market um, and their first mover is they've they've attracted Fortune 500 clients. Um, some of their largest clients include Capital One. Wow. Um, uh, they just signed on Allegiant uh, Airlines, um, Scotia Bank, um, Snickers. Um, so again, big market. Uh, you know, first movers, um, really smart teams. That's really impressive. Now, you have an impressive history launching over. 40 startups in 24 countries and being included in the top 40 under 40. Congratulations Thanks, on all your success and also being awarded the Canadian Angel Investor of the Year. Amongst many other things, how do you think this benefits Victory Square? Um, you know, first off, I think that a lot of that success is, um, is you know, is, is the team that you know that we, that's that's supporting myself and, and VST. So there's a lot of people that are contributing to that success. I'd say the biggest factor is, you know, it takes time to build a great company. You know, I've been in the tech space for over 25 years. I've lived through the dot-com boom, the dot-com crash, the smartphone boom, the collapse in 08, 09, and you know, in the, in the financial markets. And today, you know, what we refer to as the intelligence revolution. And the key there is seeing the ebbs and flows, uh, not panicking when when times are tough. You know, that's when you either need to you know, be agile and adjust your business model or stay the course and not panic. And I think it's it's that experience over that 25 years and that those 25 years of success that we've, we've been able to bring to VSD to kind of stay the course on what our vision is, but also bring that to our, our portfolio companies um, uh, to help them kind of see the grander vision 
and, and, and not, not, not be panicked. Over those 25 years, um, given the success we've had, we've also attracted some amazing talent. So I think um, one of the other benefits is we've been able to bring a lot of talent locally and globally to VST and its portfolio companies. And the third is attracting capital and clients globally. You know, having, you know, over those 25 years launched um, products and services in over 24 countries, um, we're able to help not only VST, um, but um, our portfolio companies kind of commercialize, you know, globally. They say tech is borderless, and I think that's a, a big advantage for us. That's great. Now, who are some of Victory Square Technology's main competitors, and how do you stand out? You know, I don't think we have any, you know, direct competitors because our model is identify a pain point in a large addressable market, find a paying customer, and then go find or build a solution for that, uh, that customer. So that in its own is kind of a, you know, something that for within VST, we, we look towards, you know, our, our own business model and, 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 and a way to generate revenue and profit. But we have been compared to other companies and, you know, a couple of them, I would say, one is Constellation Software which is a Canadian company, I think a market cap over a billion. Uh, they go and, and, and buy, you know, I think more mature tech companies, they're buying balance sheets. Um, uh, Rocket Internet is another one. It's based out of Germany. Um, yeah, and they go and invest in and, and grow uh, tech companies that, you know, I think have passed like that Series A, Series B kind of level. Um, and the third is probably like a Y Combinator, which is based in, um, you know, in the Valley, and they're focused on, um, again, uh, you know, emerging, emerging tech. I'd say those are probably the three companies we're compared to uh, most of the time. But for us, you know, we, we feel like, um, you know, we've got our business model and, and our plan and, 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 you know, we stay in our lane. So. Very good. Now, it's important to have a strong team. How does the team at Victory Square make the company so successful? Um, you know, everything for us is really, you know, around the team. You know, we have this motto, uh, you know, um, ideas, people, and capital are kind of the key elements. So, at, you know, Victory Square, we have a vision, um, and we've built a, you know, kind of a, a game plan and a roadmap to, to, to help realize that vision. But, you know, it's the people, um, the resources that help us execute on it. And so I think, again, over the 25 years of being in the tech space and, and, and building uh, products in over 24, 24 countries, we've been able to attract um, some of the brightest minds on our C-suite, um, partnerships with over 80 accelerators around the world. So accelerators in Berlin, Germany, um, Delhi, India, Sao Paulo, Brazil. You know, again, tech is borderless. So for us, uh, given that we have a, you know, a, a, a global kind of mindset, attracting that talent from all over has been in key. So C-level um, partnerships, and, and just as an example, some of those partnerships aren't just accelerators, but they're large companies like Foxwoods Casino, which is the largest native man casino in the US. You know, organizations like McKinsey Consulting and EY, uh, the Canadian government, uh, you know, which has been key. And then the talent of entrepreneurs that we're building around or, or investing in. Some of these are first movers in the brightest minds in, in a lot of their different kind of disciplines. So, you know, earlier we talked about Sam Chandola in the gaming space. He's a thought leader. Uh, Jeff Jang and Adrian Duke, really, really big thought leaders in the immersive, uh, in, you know, immersive space. And then uh, Darius uh, Gami, who's the CEO of Fans Unite. Again, thought leader uh, and uh, uh, in the in the sports betting and gaming community, so very good. Now your financial outlook shows impressive and consistent revenue growth. Very impressed with your revenue growth. Tell us about how this has been achieved and maintained. So again, it's I think it's it's discipline. You know, we have a vision, uh, we have a game plan, um, and we've attracted the talent to help execute on that. Um, myself and 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 and, and uh, you know, and a business partner fund the company. So it's not only important that we're disciplined and fiscally responsible on our our, our business plan and model, but because we're funding it, it's important that the company is hitting its revenue targets, if not exceeding it. Um, and, and squeezing out, you know, and profit to continue to grow and build, you know, build out the, the company. So I think sticking to a very, you know, disciplined plan, having a vision, sticking to a disciplined plan, and, and then, you know, having the financial capacity to fund that, you know, fund that growth has been key to maintaining that, um, that consistency for us. 
Now, having a public company, I always tell everyone there's two businesses. There's the underlying business, yeah. and then there's the public side, which a lot of the time has to do with your share structure. Can you explain to us a little bit about your share structure? Yeah, so you know, I think we have about 73 to 74 million shares out. Uh, no overhang, no warrants out right now. Um, so it's, it's, yeah, it's very tight. I think management owns just under 50%. Wow. Uh, I'm the largest, largest shareholder, have not sold a single share, um, you know, accumulated the have continued to accumulate my my position as a you know as a big believer in what we're doing, um, and it's interesting. One of the points you just brought up, you know, it's something we've been told that you know as as a CEO of a public company, um, you know, you have two jobs. One is to you know manage the business, and the other is to manage the market. Yes. Uh, and it, you know that's one thing that you know it's a it's a learning curve. Yes. Uh, you know, as we, as we as we as we you know continue to grow, we've really focused on the operational side. So we're very confident in the KPIs and what we've built. And now for us, it's focusing on that other side, which is the market. So, you know, sharing what we're doing and the great things we're doing to um, and how undervalued we are to, to investors. And that brings me to the next question. Our community is all over the world and it's a lot of investors looking for companies that are underappreciated, yeah. underexposed and undervalued. Why would one of those investors want to buy this stock? Out of all the stocks out there, why this yeah. one? So I love this saying Warren Buffett always uh, says, which is, um, it's not enough to invest in a good company, but it's the entry point of that company. So first off, we feel like the entry point is great. We feel like we're significantly undervalued. Um, you know, two, I think we give investors the opportunity to invest in you know the next tech unicorns or the unicorns before their unicorns. Um, we're doing the legwork to validate some of the brightest startups from around the world, uh, and then giving investors access to to invest in them through VST, alongside myself. Um, at the same levels as myself, um, uh, but with the opportunity to you know to get in early to something that to companies that may be the next Microsoft, Facebook, you know, uh, or Google, you know, the uh, investors always also say, I wish I could have had an opportunity to invest in those companies, um, you know, when they were at their 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 infancy, and we give them that opportunity. I think also too for investors globally, it's very difficult to get a, to get access, you know, to early stage. Tech um, tech companies and the time at the time you do, they're public and their valuations are significant, uh, or you have to invest in a fund so meet the criteria of a fund and be locked into a private company. Here, uh, VST is audited, it's transparent and it's liquid. So we feel like not only is it undervalued and, and the opportunity is significant, but it's an investment that allows people to invest in and, and get liquidity or take money off the table during you know different positions of the company cycle. That's fantastic. Now, where do you see Victory Square Technologies headed in the future? You know, so for us, the you know the future, we look at this in you know in the next three to five years, we're uh, making some bets which we think are going to be significant in gaming, in sports betting, insurance, fintech. So you know, we're confident that we've got some big you know big big winners um, in here. But in the short term, over the next I would say six to twelve months, our goal is to continue to grow our revenues. Um, uh, spin off some of the uh, uh, the portfolio companies that have matured, like Fans Unite, uh, V2 Games, um, unlock value for VST sh shareholders and VST, uh, you know, th through that. Um, and you know, the third is we've been incubating some some really exciting new projects that we've kind of kept under wraps. That I think over the next six to twelve months we'll start introducing to the market, and I think that'll that'll bring a lot of attention, eyeballs, um, and asset value to to VST. That's fantastic. Well, you know what? We're so excited here at Rich TV Live to see the growth. And thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. And for those of you that are not uh, watching, thank you so much for joining us today, Shafin. This is the CEO of Victory Square Technologies, Shafin Tejani. Have yourselves a great day and thank you for watching.